And now we can also use this colour for the shadow on the grass that's cast by the deck chairs, but we want this to also melt into the colour of the deck chairs and almost into the pigeon. And where the grass is, we'll just give it the feeling that this, the grass has got little um, blades. <laughs> That's the I was looking for. Right now, let's blend this colour into there now while we've got it. The colour of the deck chair framework, it's definitely got the burnt umber in and it changes throughout the photograph, throughout the real view. It changes through the browns, through the blues. Yes, in real life, they're one colour wood. But once they become a watercolour, once they become, yeah, once they become a watercolour, they are the changing colours that happen where that wood is lit, less lit, shaded, darkly shaded. So we need to be aware of that. And that's something which photographs can actually show very well, especially close-up photographs. You can see the change. If you look at this photograph, you can see it going darker and then lighter, bluer and then yellower. So follow that with your watercolour. Exaggerate, if anything. So we've got to decide how we're going to make this dark. I think it is burnt umber and ultramarine because that makes nearly a black and we know that the burnt umber and Prussian is too green and we want this to be ready to become a more gingery colour so it could pick up a little bit of burnt sienna even. In fact I think burnt sienna would be lovely in with the ultramarine. Right let's go for it let's get that lovely feeling and maybe we should even use a flat brush let's see what happens if we use a flat brush. Yeah we can get our shape, our line, beautifully. Now here we're now no longer looking at the structure, we're looking at the lights and shades that play across it. And here I am really looking at the detail in the photograph. I drew it in my sketch, but not with enough information. I'm now really using this information from the photograph. The pattern, it's the pattern of light and shade. Got to mix up enough colour so that it runs together. Let's pick up enough bounce here and there to keep it warm. Coming up, more burnt sienna. And now as it comes down here, definitely the colour gets bluer and lighter. So let's pick up that Prussian here and bring it down, right down to here. drop in a little bit of this colour where it's darker near the edge of the canvas. Come down here, this has also got bluer. It's probably the light reflecting off the gra grass that makes it seem bluer. But also sometimes when you're printing, the actual camera lifts colours. Go with it, if it looks good, go with it. going to pick up a bit of the ultramarine there. And then it seems to be even more blue over here. And actually it's quite pale over here. It doesn't seem to be half as dark as on this side. It's picking up a little bit of burnt sienna on its top edge, very dark under there, very dark as it comes down there, and now very dark, very dark under here. You see the form coming together Using the flat brushes prevents us almost drawing it too carefully. I think there's a great danger in forgetting that painting is painting and trying to be too accurate and taking away the lovely life of the brush. The brush stroke in watercolour is just a wonderful thing. Don't kill it off by trying to get it right.
come down under here. Now this is lovely the way this dark shapes the bottom of the seat. And then we got the shadows of the back of there, almost too complicated to see, so we just use the brush. A little bit of light. Can't really reach that with the brush. <laughs> Come down through here now, another area of dark, unlit framework. Down through here, meet the top of the pigeon's head. So we can use that as well to shape the top of the pigeon, dark against light. And that will give him his head shape, his body. Let's pick up a little bit of violet for his body. So we haven't got anything else warm enough, really. I've got to stand him in the ground. I've got to give him a shadow. I'm going to paint his little fellow. We'll use the same violet, a bit of the Prussian blue, keep him nice and dark, a little bit of the raw umber and leave the little beak. Just a few brush strokes, use that brush. Brush is made to make pigeons. <laughs> And again, he needs a little shadow in the grass. Now, the grass itself needs strengthening. Obviously, we need to paint the green stripes of the chair. So I'm going to use Viridian for that. And I'm not going to use a flat brush for that because where it twists and turns, I need the shape of the round sable. And I'm starting with the middle stripe because luckily it's got one, two, three, four, five. It's got five stripes. And so the middle the middle stripe will be in the middle because sometimes what happens is you draw the stripes from left to right and you end up with a stripe that doesn't work proportionately. So we're quite lucky with the fact there's five stripes. And these stripes help shape this deck chair. Still paying attention to light against dark. The, the grass is going to have to come up a bit darker against that, I think, because they're definitely a light shape. Use it to create the light, the framework. Darker under here because they're in shadow. And we can actually add a little bit more dense colour. Oh, I should start with the middle one, shouldn't I? <laughs> See, again, the stripe helps create the light side on the deck chair. lovely where the light's coming through, isn't it? That can actually be even darker under there. Little red beak pigeon. And now I'm strengthening up the tones in areas where it's too light. Oh, I've just seen some stripes I've missed out. So 
It's easy when you're going along. You think you're painting everything and you find you've actually missed out major things like green stripes. And now we've just got to strengthen up this grass, haven't we? Because at the minute, the grass is too light. So we will just finish strengthening the tones just so that you can feel the where that overlaps the framework at the top. And I'm going to use, I think, a bit of Prussian blue mixed with the aureolin. And the purpose of this is to strengthen light against dark or dark against light. So it doesn't have to be everywhere. So now you can step back, look at your picture. For example, here, th there's nothing that really differentiates these two. So we know we have to darken the grass behind it. But where there's dark against light, we don't have to. So we take the colour off the brush so that that remains dark against light. So we're literally going to come over the painting, contrasting these areas to bring out anywhere which isn't sufficiently light against dark or dark against light. It's this counterbalance that creates the interest in watercolour. Over here, it's all dark. The seat, though, is light. So we want to darken. We can leave little bits of the grass out of the, of the background grass, I mean. Out of the wash. What we don't want to do is get too solid. Got to keep the transparency right here. Oh, that's interesting. It's here that we need to strengthen. But we don't want it too dark here. So we take the colour off. Here it doesn't need to be too strong. In fact, we don't even need it in the back there because it's actually lighter in the distance. And here we need to strengthen it. And here. But not really here. So we just take it off the brush. It's a little bit bright in there. Lift that out. While it's still damp, we can still lift a bit off. When you start to hesitate, that usually means your painting is probably almost finished. Because if you don't quite know what to do, it usually means there's nothing much left to do. So step back from your painting a bit, have a look at it, half close your eyes in it, see if the lights and darks work, and then you can go in with tiny changes. For example, I think that the green on the chairs just could do with being up a little bit in colour. We don't want to strengthen too much the lightness against darkness, <laughs> the relative tone in other words, but we do want to lift the colour a bit so that you can feel the greenness, feel the, the sunshine in the chairs, I suppose it is, isn't it? Especially under here where they are, although, they, although the light's coming through, they are more shaded. And just here, just the edge of the chair, we want to keep the colour light, but we just want to give it a little bit more greenness. Just a tad. It's a little bit pale. A little bit pale. Let me just half close my eyes on this to see if the tones work. Mm, I think they do. Yep, I'm happy. The pigeons are chasing each other, don't they? <laughs> you see, you don't need a wide view to make a painting. These small details are just as much fun. available on DVD. Try these techniques yourself at home whenever you wish. Today's workshop is now available to order on DVD from the Painting and Drawing channel. For further information and to order your copy, go to www.paintingdrawingchannel.com.